Hi, my name is Ian the Green. I am uh, a grant level arts and sciences award holder. Um, I will be teaching today on a French Bastarda and learn and looking at it at a manuscript and we'll be learning from the manuscript how to be doing that. Um, before we get too far into the exactitudes of it, I wanted to go ahead and just cover a little bit of the background. Um, this is this, manu this manuscript that, you're, uh, that is actually in my background here um, comes from 1450 to 1499 French. It is from probably from the city of Tours was the, was the best that it was told. Um, I handled this manuscript back in June of 2013, um, and I have adapted my own personal script to this book since then. Um, there are some things about it that are totally different, like I do not write the Gs the way that these guys write the Gs, and that's okay. That, that's what making your own script does. Um, um, on the other hand, I do know how to write it for this way because that's what I learned first. And then I went, eh, I want to modify it. And that's okay if we do that with you, you know, if you do that for yourself as well. But again, in the interest of historical authenticity, we're going to teach the script that we see in the book so that we can make the letters that look like the letters from the writing in the book. Um, one of my favorite manuscript search engines is the Digital Scriptorium. You will see that in the PDF handout for the information uh, for this class. Um, and this manuscript is in that database. Um, you can do quick searches, you can do refined searches, you can go, look, I need German 1200, and they will find you manuscripts from German 1200 that have been scanned in. Um, you can find basic information about the, and shelf marks. Shelf marks are essentially uh, ISBN numbers, for lack of a better way of putting it. They're not really because they're not universal and how they're written and how they're done is entirely up to the library that holds them, but you get the idea. It is the reference number for that particular manuscript. Uh, an advanced search will, like I say, let you pick a place, a time, current location. Sometimes you can even pick the scribe, um, although that's kind of iffy. Um, the book itself on uh, the institution that is holding it is Bloomington, Indiana, the Lilly Library. Lilly Library holds one of the largest collections of miniature manuscripts, literally books that fit in the palm of your hand. This isn't one of them. The book was a book of hours. It has the use of Rome's. It has uh, the mixed hours as well. Uh, it was written in both Latin and French, the contemporary language. Um, mostly the, the contemporary language of French uh, is just the um, calendar at the beginning, but not entirely. Um, when I deconstructed it, um, I showed that the pen angle was typically at 40 degrees. There's a lot of variation. You'll see that in the handout. Um, the X height is three and a half niblets. It's not three, it's not four. Um, and I find that a lot of period manuscripts are that way. They're, they're somewhere in the, they usually have a half. They, they don't usually go to exactly to a nib. Um, a centers are typically one and a half to two niblets, um, and D centers vary a lot, depends on the flourish, but you can get anything between two and six niblets with this uh, particular manuscript. Uh, and so that covers the basics. Um, and I'm wondering, do we have any questions yet at this time? Nothing it's yet. pretty interesting that you can, um... I guess that you're at the level where you can know how to change a letter and still and still have it be that particular hand, if that makes sense. So Batard's really good about being adaptable. Um, Batard is or so there's three different names that go for Batard. Batard typically is the more German version, although interestingly, this was labeled a Batard in and it's French. And French batards are typically referred to as bastarda. Not always, but that's another name for this particular script. Yes, this means bastard. Um, and then if you go over to English, they almost always call it the secretary hand. Um, and the English has its own version. And then there's little regional versions and manuscripts and, and different, like this particular scriptorium might do it this way or that way. So bastarda is a group of scripts that fall, you know, that, that fall under a broad, you know, umbrella. Technically, they are Gothic scripts, um, but they are more informal, tend to be more informal, and they tend to be a bit more, um, I can't think of the word all of a sudden. 
Uh, when you link letters to letters all the time, um, cursive, there we go. Um, and you can kind of see that with this. Um, so you can, you, there is some adaptability, but if you go too far out of the range, you're no longer doing that script. Um, so what I did with the G is I made it look a little bit more formal and angular instead of looking like a Y. Uh, but that's a conversation for another time. But Bastardas really do allow for more personalization. And that's really fun. Uh, but again, we're going to focus on just what this one does, unfortunately. Um, let me see. Let's see if I can figure out how to share the screen correctly this time. But um, we should be getting that. Looks like we've got it up. All right. So I assume you can see the handout? Yes, we can see it. All right. Just wanted to make sure before I went on. There was one time when I was talking for five minutes and people were like, uh, we don't see what you're sharing. I'm like, oops. So it's always good to check. So there are a lot of different things to do. What I've done is when I handle the manuscript or what you can do is also download a, a large version of the page that you want. Um, that's the nice thing about the script, the, the search engine that I sent you is that when you do have scans that you can get a hold of, they will allow you to download them. They're absolutely free. Um, and then what I did is I opened it up in a um, computer program that allowed me to pull out letters, single letters at a time. And that really let me have a nice look at them, let them be much bigger, get a good look at them, and then be able to kind of see what's going on a whole lot easier than if I was looking at just the manuscript. Um, in my case, I used art, um, the, the old um, word program, Microsoft program that you just got to draw things with. Um, so that was, so it's pretty nice. Um, so the baseline here, and then we have the waistline at the top of the letter. And the way that you find the pen angle is to look for the thinnest lines that are there. And that will, and then usually there's kind of a flat area that goes with that thin line. And that will tell you roughly what the pen angle is, is to be. However, Perfection is not what scribes were doing back then on average. They were writing to be legible, recognizable, readable. They weren't necessarily writing to compete with a printing press, which in this case hadn't been around for that long. The printing press was competing with the writing. They were actually trying to make their letters look like they'd been handwritten. Um, so the, the pen angle on the first A at the top is about 36. And OK, at the bottom, it's about a 36 degree angle. Yes, I drew the lines. I got out of, pro, you know, I drew the lines long on the angles. And I got out a protractor and I checked. Um, but then as we go down the A's, we see that we have a 40 degree, a 34, a 42, a 28, a 37, and a 30. That's a lot of variation. One of the things about the Stardet is there's a lot of pen manipulation that goes on. They are twisting the pen and moving their elbow and changing the angles. Sorry. Um, um, so go ahead. You said one of the some things about the Stardet? I didn't catch that. No, that's fine. If I'm talking too fast or somehow it doesn't quite work out because of speakers or whatever else, please stop me and I'll be happy to jump in, you know, repeat myself. More than happy to do that. So Bastarda has um, a lot of pen manipulation. And pen manipulation is where typically where you're twisting a pen, where you're lifting a pen up on a corner, as opposed to always leaving it flat and leaving it at that exact same angle the whole time where you write the pen, where you're, where you write the, where you're writing the letter or drawing the letter. Um, and so it's not unusual to see the angles change throughout. So that's how you can determine those pen angles. And that's what this entire front page shows you. Now, how do you determine the X height? First of all, let's cover what X height is. Uh, I know most of you probably know it, but I just want to go ahead and cover it real quick. X height is how many nib widths high the letter is. So when you know the pen angle, then the opposite angle is where the thickness of the pen is. So if I have a 36 degree angle on the top of this A, 
then if I draw a line perpendicular to it and through it, that's going to be the thickest part of the pen or the thickest part of the line. So I find the thickest part of the line, so that helps me look to know where to look to find the thickest part of the line. And the thickest part of the line is going to be the width of the pen. It always is the width of the pen, unless they've double drawn, but then you can usually tell. That, that thickness being the, the width of that pen, you put it, you take a divider usually, but not always, um, something that can measure that accurately, you stick it on the baseline and you walk it till you get to the top. And in this case, three and a half is pretty much what it was every single time. So does that make sense? Any questions? Uh, makes sense to me. All right. So that's how I got the pen angle of roughly 40 degrees. Uh, the, the B, the third B is kind of really perfect for showing that. But the other thing along with the fourth B, but the other thing is, is like you can kind of take an average of where the pen was at and kind of use that as, well, they were probably going for this, you know, sweet spot, but they're moving around a lot and kind of missing it. There we go. Um, and you know, I did that with Elkin of York's work. That that guy has terrible handwriting. Really brilliant person. Um, terrible handwriting. Um, anyway, so now for the interactive part. I want you to tell me how you would draw this letter. And um, to give an example of how to do that, um, I will do the first A. And y'all can agree or disagree with me, that's fine. Um, there is no right or wrong answers here. For me personally, I am a pragmatist and I want to be able to use the same strokes as much as I can to get the different letters. So for this A, I'm actually going to draw an O and then put a line and then put a tail on it. So for this A, it looks to me like they're going over, down, and then barely coming here, lift up the corner, and then come up. And then they put their pen in. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. You put the pen inside and pull it down. And then essentially repeat the same stroke. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and start sh and then show you an overhead. Maybe. Huh. Stop share. There we go. New video. Overhead. And then I need to turn off my background. There we go, none. And now you should be able to see what I've got here. Yep, we can see it now. Thank you. So turn, turn the camera to match. All right, hit the focus button one more time. Yeah, that's much better. All right, so for me, the way I see that they're doing this, and okay, so pens should almost always be perpendicular to your writing surface. However, you can't see what I'm doing if I do that. So I'm gonna do this so you can actually see. It's the first stroke of the O. And then I come over and down again. And then I just do the first stroke of the O again. Now, if I wanted to make it a little more fancy, I'm gonna do that on the end of it. Does that seem like a valid interpretation of the A? Um, I see no problem with it, but maybe, okay. I, 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 yeah. All right. And that's the thing is, is that my interpretation does not necessarily, there, there's no wrong answers here. There are a lot of right answers. Um, but as long as, as long as it ends up looking like the letter you want, you did, you drew the letter correctly. That's something to keep in mind. Now, for me, when I look at this, this is probably a little too open. 
this is probably more correct. Um, that said, when I look inside there and make again, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to have a pen width, a nib width in between the first stroke and the second stroke for that O. Maybe, maybe not, or for the A, I should say. Something to think about. So now that I've shown you kind of how I mean to do it, how do we want to talk about the letter B? And if you want to show how you would draw it, if you have an overhead camera, that's great. If you don't, well, then tell me and I'll try and figure out what you mean. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, I would do, um, you know, a long riser kind of uh, what you did with the L. So get the A sender, pull it down. Yep. All right. So what do I do when I get to the bottom? Uh, down to the right lower, uh, a stroke down to the baseline. Okay. So I am at what I would call my baseline. Yeah. And then I would go up uh, from there, like lift a pen and go up. Then uh, one nib length below the, the top line. Mm -hmm. I would then uh, go up to the top line and down to the right. The top line, by the way, properly is called the waistline, just so you know. A waistline, sorry. Okay, oh, no, fine. good to know. I, so go, that would go down just one nib length. Uh -huh. uh, to, no, no, sorry, to, to, the, to the lower right. So stroke to the lower right. Uh, well, not straight, but more like the A, sort of like the oh, okay. shape on the A. Sure, sure. And, and then, then keep going? Then go down all the way to the baseline. And then I would do a stroke uh, to close it. Yeah. Something something like that. <laughs> well, and it, it, you know, I'm drawing, you know, I'm, I'm leaving my pen there. So, and I'm listening to you trying to figure out what you mean. Is that a little bit better? Yes, yes, that, that's, that's kind of what I meant. Oh, and um, at the top of the B, I would do an additional uh, stroke to uh, sort of curly stroke. Yep, there we go. So this is interesting to me. Watch, watch the difference here. What I did here with this one is I came here and then I twist, pulled my pen out. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, I lifted my elbow away and it twists the pen. So I'll do that again here and twist that pen. You see how it makes that difference? If I do that here and I just leave it, it doesn't look the same, does it? Right. And so to me, it looks like they're either twisting the pen or on that fourth B, they're closing the loop. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah, I see on the on the B all the way to the right. You can yeah. kind of see the loop closed. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Mm -hmm. So for me, the way I draw this, and again, and that's the point, is that I want conversation. I don't want this is the right way or the wrong way. If you look at that B, wow, that, that looks a lot like the B that's there. So good job. I would come here pull this here. Right, okay. Like a tilde shape. Yep. Now you notice I did that and it came down. So that's wrong. All right, so let's play with it. Come here, a little there, come down. Two strokes and I'm done as opposed to three or four. Well, and then this. So I have a question, Art. Is the height from the baseline to the waistline, the same as the height from the waistline to the top of the riser? In, no. So let me draw this out. Well, you said it's three and a half nibs for. So for I'm the, put some lines height. here real quick. They're obviously not well measured. Yeah. Um, but they allow me to do this. So we have four nib widths right there. So it's supposed to be at three and a half. So mm -hmm. I'll do that. And the A sender, which is the line, which is the part of the letter that goes above the waistline. That's the waistline. These are the A senders. They are about two nib widths. So one, oops, that's two, that's going up. One, two. That's roughly where it should start. Again, this isn't perfect. We're doing it quick, but it gives you the idea. Mm -hmm. 
and then here. Okay, so it's two nib widths above. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And if you if you look at your exemplar that I have for your bees, and you look at the thickest part of the line, mm -hmm. and then you take that thickest part of the line and turn it vertical and do one, two, you'll see that your ascenders are usually about two. Sometimes yeah, you might get to that. three, but typically not. And, and sorry if I don't use the correct terminology. I forget the word sometimes. Well, oh, that's okay. I, I've been described for 15, six, 16, 16 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you don't use the correct term, you're using a term that tells me, you're using a term and it tells me what you mean. So we're communicating. That's mm -hmm. great. Don't worry about it. And if I use a correct term, I'm not trying to correct you. I'm trying to help you either remember or inform you of a more universal term. Yes. As opposed to a correct term, because honestly, there's a lot of ways to call this. And paleography itself is the study of letters is not an exact science. There's a lot of different terms meaning the same thing. So don't worry about it. All right, so that's the B. So Rudava, do you have anything you want to add? No, it's interesting to know the A center is the thing that's like above the waistline. Um, oh, I thought that the waistline was like the middle part where where the B would like come out of the straight line. <laughs> this the area right here. Yeah, I thought that was waistline, but nope. Everybody does. I made the same. I did the same thing when I was learning this stuff. Which, by the way, I didn't learn this until four years after I started doing calligraphy. Yeah, not not a new thought, but that is not how we use it um, as calligraphers. This is the waistline. Cool. So, and this is the baseline. Anything that goes above the waistline is an ascender. Anything that goes below the baseline is, um, yeah, a descender. Not particularly imaginative, but very descri actively descriptive. All right. So the letter C. Can I pick on you, Ravana, and have you do the letter C for us? You're allowed to tell me no. And it should be Rudava. Am I saying that name halfway right at least? Yes, halfway right. Because sometimes you say Rudava and sometimes you say Rubada. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, 50 50. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, okay. um, yeah, I'd rather not okay, more in the like a beginner part. That's absolutely fine. No worries. All right. So I will. Since um, John went the last time, I will go this time for the C. For me, the C is essentially, I can do the same stroke that for, this, for the first part of the A, for the A, the O, the C. So um, for me, it's pretty flat instead of rounded, but it kind of rounds here. And then it looks to me like they kind of, come up a half a nib width. The neat thing for me is the top of this C probably starts with the nib halfway out, you know, with half a nib width over. Um, but then again, it might be right inside. I don't, you know, it kind of depends on how you want to look at it. And it looks like it's a curve down and then up. So like that. And this is probably a bit too angular, which is kind of, it's supposed to probably should be a bit more rounded like that. And that's what I see the C doing. So any disagreement, anything you would change or add? Nope, I'm trying it on my own and I, I keep, it keeps looking more like a T. <laughs> Yeah, well, and the funny thing is, is that when we get to a T, I honestly think that they kind of use this, mm -hmm. but that's late. That's a different conversation for later. Yeah, it, lo it looks quite similar to what I would, because I'm trying to do the flat then curve instead of just doing curve all the way. Yeah, and so, the way I'm doing it, I think I think I'm putting too much flat in, and it just look 
ends up looking a little bit like a T. Yeah. So for me, when I write this letter, uh, for the way I adapted it, I have a straight and then a curve. And then I definitely do that. And I think that's more pointed. I think it's more aesthetically pleasing. Um, I like that better. And that's a little bit big for what I do. So same thing. Now, but that's what I do. That's what I adapted. This is what they are doing. Two different things, very similar, but little differences match her. This is definitely curved, but angular. This is a little curved and not particularly angular. Both are valid, but this is what they are doing from the manuscript. And the idea is learning what the manuscript is doing. All right. How about the letter D? You want to you want to tackle that one, or you want to tell me what to do? Um, I mean, sure. Um, sorry, I'm just in the middle, in between bites. That's um, okay. Yeah, I mean, so th this D, I mean, it looks like it starts pretty much like the C does, with the um, you know, kind of straight and, and curve, um, from the waistline down to the baseline. Perfect. All right, and I'm gonna get my I'm gonna draw my ladder again here real quick. All right. So, no way. I think I drew that too big. Not too, too big. All right. So, all right. All right. And then again, the terminology I'm not very good with yet. So, um, I would, yeah. So, well, the S under, yeah, but um, the beginning of the letter on the left hand side would begin at the, at the top line. At that, yeah, about that. At, at that um distance and create a little bit of a tail and then no well, not i mean i think it, it looks smaller than that like a tiny tail but but either way and then it goes yeah. down angular down to the right yeah yeah i was thinking of the tail like in, yeah I, I see the tail in one of them but not in the others but you know, no like, i agree like that's there's one d that has a tail on it and the rest of them don't yeah and it looks like I mean, I see like three different types here almost, like one that the that the the sender never never curves back to the left. It's just all the way down to the base. And it yeah. almost looks like it changes angle a little bit as yeah. it goes down. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like a subtle curve. Right. And then I see one where it's angled and then almost straight down. And then one that's like like this angled and then curved to the left. Right. And these were all taken from the same page. So it was mm -hmm. the same person who wrote these. Yeah. A lot of variation. What I wanted to point, one of the things I wanted to point out is that in the second D, and I should switch over to share screen for that. There we go, share. So can you see it? Yes. So the second D here, if you look at the bottom, you can see they missed. Yeah, yeah, that is not a perfect connection. Well, those mistakes, for lack of a better way of putting it, kind of show you how the letter was drawn. Mm. And it shows you that these strokes are different. And that there was, you know, assuming that you can see other letters on the page, that there was an attempt to connect here and they missed. So you can kind of see, okay, yeah, they didn't draw an O first and then draw a line. They pulled all the way through. You know? You can see, and so you can kind of see on the first D that, wow, they they almost missed, but they but they got it. And then on the last two Ds, it's perfect. They they didn't have any problems whatsoever. But if you also look really carefully, you can kind of see that they probably did exactly what you said. They drew that C, and then when they pulled the A sender down, they probably pulled it over the start of that C. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, sort of the, they're using it as a target. <laughs> 
Yeah. Instead of barely trying to connect, they're just like, I'm going to draw my line right over that start. On that third one, the interesting thing, it almost looks like there's a, a third stroke, like at the bottom of the sea that goes up, maybe at a, I don't know, less than 40 degree angle, like a 30 something degree. No, I mean, a more than like 50 degree angle and just gives it a slight flourish. Oh, are you talking about to the right of the letter? Yeah. All right. So what that is, is another letter that encroached. Oh, okay. Okay. But you're right. It does. You're absolutely right. That is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. You're dead right. I think it's an O. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just a. It's um ligature, I guess. Oh, yeah, and that's probably why they did the 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 sender the way they did. Uh huh. It it it, it um, goes into the O. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Right. Light bulbs going on. That's perfect. And uh, for people that don't know, a ligature is simply um connection of letters, uh, especially strokes that are designed to connect, but not always, um, that letter from the left to the letter on the right. Uh, that's Or if you happen to, if you're reading right to left, it's the letter, letter from the right to connecting to the letter on the left. Um, and when you say this is a cursive script, there's a lot, that means that there's a lot of ligatures. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I agree with, I, I like this. Um, I think it's very good, um, and I think your description was good, too. So if I do it not so slow, is that a little bit better? No, because that's too flat and angular. Oh, that's what they did. Okay, so you see how I didn't really curve it in, but I kind of curved it in at the end? Watch how I do that. And this is not what they did, but I want to get it out of the way. So if I take my pen and I make sure that I get half a nib width that eats this top here, watch how it connects here without me having to do much. See that? Now yeah, all I have- like a, It's like creating like a little target for you to hit. Yep, and again, I'm pulling that way out just so that it doesn't bother us. Now, the way I change that from looking angular is right before I hit it, I kind of start to pull straight down, but that makes that outside edge look like a curve, doesn't it? Right. So, yeah. I think you nailed it on the head and I just drew it a little differently than what you were thinking. All right, page two, the letter E. The letter E is the letter C. I mean, how is it not? Just an extra little thin line. All right, it doesn't the letter C. come up as much as the C does. Like, it's more like a, it's more like a down to the left and then down to the right without going up to the right as much. I mean, there is some on the third one, but the others don't seem to lift as much as the seated. So what I'm hearing you say, and let me see if I understand you correctly, is that when I come here, this ends early. Yeah, it ends early. Okay, and that's just how I'm saying it. I'm not saying that, that, that that's a terminology thing. And that it kind of ends up, yeah, you know what? I think you're absolutely right about that. Good eye, nice. All right, you wanna tackle the letter F or do you want me to tackle the letter F? I'll let you tackle this one. <laughs> yeah, this one's a little weird and that's okay. All right, there's two ways that they could have done this. And if you are not using a dip pen, the second way cannot work for you. So the first way, first of all, the F has an A sender on it. It starts up just like an L. You bring it down and then either as you hit the baseline or right before you hit the baseline, you lift it up and you kind of pull down. And that doesn't really work with this. And so what I'm gonna do is I bring it for my 45 and then I twist the pen to more like a 90 to get close to the 90 and you kind of get that. All right, so that's one way to do this. Here's a better way. 
Don't even worry about it. Come here and then go ahead and cross it. And then put another line in there and just right back over it. You see how that makes it look a little bit more like that? And then you can pull that out. So you start your A sender like you would the L, stop at the line, come back up, create another line there, and do something like that. Does that work for you? I guess it a hump back. Gives it a hump back, or you can give it a hump stomach. Yeah, I've seen those especially with the longest before. Yep, and then if, if you do that though, pull for, make sure that that hump comes up from all the way, not just right there, because you know it doesn't look right. I think I the hump- the double lining of Fs to be really, really weird in Bazaar. I think double lining is weird, period, unless you're doing capitals. Um, but weird or not, it's what they did. Now, the other way to do this, and I, I don't have anything on hand to show you, is that if you have, especially a quill pen that has been soaked in water overnight, like it's supposed to be, or at least half an hour to an hour, um, if you push down harder on it, it gets wider. And so it will do this. And if you are good and you are practiced, you can keep drawing that with that and it'll make the stroke wider. And then as you lift up, it'll come to a point again. And I honestly think that's what they did with this. I don't think there's a lot of double stroking going on. I think they just pushed their pen down a little harder. Because if I'm going to have a script that I'm supposed to be writing quickly, why would I go back and do a second stroke? It makes no sense to me. Now, I've seen Bastarda used in uh, contracts and grants of arms that are done, or pat patents of arms is the correct term. Um, and then they'll have, a, you know, some very strict Gothic in there as well. And in those, I mean, it's a very precise Bastarda. Um, and so they're not messing with this. They're not doing a cursive. Every letter is distinct. But that's not what we're working on. Anyway, I just realized that you probably couldn't see what I was drawing. All right, stop. Well, the last one we didn't see, but the others we were seeing. Yeah, and then that one, I, you know, got to be careful. All ink will do that. Yep. <laughs> so, eh, sorry. All right. I hate this letter G. I think it's ugly. However, from a pragmatic perspective, I think it's really well done. So I will do it really quick. And I notice that we are eight minutes before the hour. So this really is almost a Y. I say almost because it's a little bit different. Check out the second peak of the Y. It is always higher every time. Interesting. I, ha I haven't caught that. Yeah. I didn't catch that for six months. And then my wife pointed it out to me. So I really didn't catch it either. I realized my wife is not a calligrapher. But I tell you what, not calligraphers can really help you out sometimes because you get stuck with what you think you're seeing and they don't know any better. So they actually see what they're seeing. But yeah, it's essentially a Y. That's crossed and the second part of the Y is always up higher. Interesting. I haven't seen that before. Yeah. Now, I, I happen to like this G a lot better. But that's me. Um, all right, so do uh, normally I get through more, but um, not today. 
do we feel comfortable being able to look at these on our own and kind of say, huh, maybe I could draw it like this? Yeah, I think the the harder ones are like that that hump. Yeah. Um, oh, let me see. There's I mean. So I do want to hit one more letter, technically two more letters. When we do an O, it's roughly like that, right? Mm -hmm. Now go ahead and look at the last page. You're going to see an X. A lot of people tell me, oh, do it something like that. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, draw an O, but do the second stroke first. Yeah, okay, I see that. I think that's faster and easier. Yeah, and, and doing it the, the, the first way. Um, a lot of the time, it, the tongue doesn't cross like in the correct location and it ends up looking kind of funky. Right. I, I really honestly think that the fastest, most efficient way to draw this is just draw an O in reverse. Do the second stroke first, the first stroke second, and you're done. Um, that doesn't mean I'm right. I just think it's fastest. No, yeah, I, give, I gave it a try and that, that feels, I don't know, feels more natural. So... Um, but yeah, so my recommendation when trying, when looking at scripts and trying to figure out how to draw your own ductus is look for strokes that repeat themselves in every letter, um, and look for the simplest way to do it. That doesn't mean you'll find it, but it means you'll find it a lot more often than if you didn't look for it. So any questions, comments, suggestions that you might have um, for me? It was lovely, thank you. Well, thank you all very much. I do have one question. Um, sure. What, what uh, style capitals does this generally use? So I did, um, there is a page for capitals. Um, it's in your handouts and it is Batard capitals. Oh, okay, I see them, yeah. Oh, those are pretty neat. Yeah, they are very I, I am, it's wild, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, so I'm sure I do. Wow, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah, if you take a look here, you can actually see some of the capitals on my background. I think, oh no, there's one capital and it's very, very artistic. Yeah, and so they do do these painted capitals as well. Um, but there aren't any capitals on the page otherwise. Well, there's the R. Yeah. It's, you know, right next to my left ear. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's it. Um, but yeah, um, all sorts of fun things you can play with it. And you can look, see those Y. See that G again? Ah, Foro Guardia. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, it feels a little bit out of place with the others, so. Yeah, but it is what it is. And it's quick, so I can't blame them. All right. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.